Hello, Cumberland Valley families. I'm glad to provide you with an update and some new recommendations that we'll have for the start of the school year uh, that we'll be presenting to the school board on Monday night uh, at our school board meeting. First and foremost, our goal is to keep our schools open all year long and to keep our students safe and engaged fully in a normal educational experience. We want them at school. We don't want them quarantined. We don't want them out of the building. Uh, we want them in school and with our teachers in a normal experience as we can have. That really is the goal and that's what we'll be effort efforting towards all year long. I wanna go through these four levels very briefly. The CEC has come up with these four levels and these are the ones that we'll be using this year. Really, and it really is looking at, okay, low and moderate transmission, which is where we were the majority of the summer is really kind of what we would hope to be in, you know, to have a very normal school experience for our students. As we hit substantial, which is where we are currently, uh, you know, and move toward high, which is unfortunately where I think we're headed based on what I'm seeing from the CDC uh, in next week. As we hit these two levels, we have less ability to maintain complete normalcy. And unfortunately we have more cases that start showing up in schools. When we were in high transmission last year, we were averaging somewhere between 12 and 20 cases a week in our buildings. And that was with about half of our school students uh, you know, in a hybrid format. So I would anticipate that while in high transmission, uh, even with some vaccination and, and some decent vaccination, hopefully in our middle and high school student populations, we will see higher incidence of, of cases. We do have really good vaccination rates for our staff, which I think is a real positive because we did see some of those issues were with staff. And as staff got vaccinated last year, we saw a much uh, sharper decline in the number of cases. But with an incidence, you know, in the community that are uh, over 100 incidents per 100,000, I do anticipate we will see cases in our buildings. This is the data as of the 13th. There will be new data coming out uh, this afternoon on the 20th. And right now we're in substantial, but I do anticipate that that will move up into high based on what I've seen from the daily tracker. So we'll be watching that. And I do think we'll be in high transmission uh, here as of Friday the 20th. Vaccination rates in Cumberland County, uh, they continue to be very good. The biggest one I really is looking at this high risk population of individuals 65 years and older the vast majority of them have been vaccinated. So we know that our high risk individuals here in Cumberland County are, are in a pretty good place. We still do not have the vaccination rates that we really hope to see and we've seen in some other parts of the state. Right now, the eligible individuals, only 63.9% of eligible individuals are fully vaccinated. We would really like to see that number be considerably higher to have a very normal school experience. Unfortunately, that's still just about two thirds of the population who's eligible. So we would really like to see that number come up even in the next week. So once again, going back to the thought exchange that we did earlier, I mean, quite truthfully, there was a lot of disagreement. There's, as you all know, it's a very difficult time right now for school districts. I mean, I'm getting anywhere from, you know, 10 to 12 to 20 emails a day and very diametrically opposed emails uh, from individuals who think we should have you know, tons of restrictions, individuals think we should have no restrictions, you know, and I understand that a lot of people are probably somewhere in the middle. But the reality is that we really want to try and keep our schools open five days a week for face to face instruction. And we want our students in our schools, we don't want them quarantined, we want them at school. We want to continue to ensure that students who are symptomatic stay home, maintain frequent lines of communication with parents, continue upgraded cleaning procedures, ventilation, hand washing, all those things are in place for the year. Sure, there are adequate processes in place for mental health support and academic supports. We've been working on those as well this summer, and we continue to make sure that these are the areas the parents that we really wanted you to have and agreed on, and we will have these things in place, and we're going to use that as our, as our kind of backdrop for the year. Vaccination updates. Really, truthfully, there's no change to vaccinations. Uh, we're not going to require COVID vaccinations as a condition of enrollment. We, we haven't. We don't intend to do that. We currently don't require any vaccinations. Um, as a condition of enrollment, but the Department of Health does require some, uh, and PA statutes require some of those things. Right now, we don't have any plan to change that. I will say, though, that vaccinations remain the normal way for parents to ensure their children stay safe in school this fall. Eligible students who are vaccinated will also be much less likely to be quarantined. Um, the rules around quarantine uh, really are different for individuals who are vaccinated and for individuals who are not. And that's one of the things that I think that parents should evaluate as they're considering this. I also think, you know, if you have any questions about vaccinations, I am not the person to contact. It is your pediatrician or your family physician, and they'll be glad to share that information with you. Masking requirements. So this is an update. 
first and foremost, we have had lots of information provided to us by state agencies uh, who, who support us that have said that there is a federal order and it is in place and that the district really needs to follow it. So we will be requiring masks on school buses to meet that federal order. That's, that's just gonna happen. And that is regardless of what's going on with the level of spread in the community, that order is in place right now. I do not anticipate that it's gonna change. Uh, one thing that we are gonna recommend too to the board is that while we're in high spread with COVID that we do have universal masking be required in all of our buildings. I'm gonna explain why that's really an important thing that we're planning to do and how it's gonna ensure that students stay in school. That is indoors. So we do not have a masking requirement outside. Students at recess, uh, outdoor activities, those kinds of things, there is no requirement to be masked. There's been very low transmission outside. We do not anticipate that that will change. We plan to update the community every Friday based on what's coming out of the Pennsylvania Department of Health's early warning dashboard and say, hey, for the next week, this is where we think we are and this is what the requirements are. <clears throat> if we move below high transmission, we move down into substantial or moderate, and we have downward trends for two weeks, we will move immediately to uh, optional masks for students. So I think a big difference between what we're proposing, what you see in some neighboring school districts, is that we are planning to have metrics in place that say, hey, you know, it's mandatory while we're in high spread, and I'm gonna explain why, but when we move down to substantial or moderate and we have a downward trend, we're gonna make it optional and give parents that decision and that choice with their, with their students. If we move to low spread, we would immediately move to optional masks for the following week. So we're really trying to have a little bit more nuanced approach here and trying to understand, um, you know, trying to support, you know, what, what parents have expressed to us related to uh, choices that they hope to have this year for their children. Um, I'm gonna explain though why we're in high spread. It really makes sense for us to be universally masked in our buildings and how that's gonna keep kids in school. So transportation, I just explained to you, we don't really have a choice. Uh, the district has received plenty of information at this point now to make that determination that we are under that federal order. I linked the order previously. You can review it, but it's very clear. District, the district needs to comply with the federal law. Uh, the in-school masking change. So when we really talk about quarantining, um, you know, we actually been walking around buildings and looking at classes and, you know, our densities of students are very different right now. You know, we have, you know, 30 kids in a class in quite a few of our classes. And, you know, we didn't have anything approaching that until the very end of the school year last year when we had very uh, downward trends in COVID-19 cases. And, and, and so when we are looking at an upward trend and we are in high spread right now, I am very concerned about the number of students that have to be quarantined uh, if we move forward right now without having universal masking. So the rules are different. If I have universal masking in the building, I have, I have to only quarantine students that are within three feet of a student who has a positive case who are in that, in that zone for more than 15 minutes. So based on the information we have, going around measuring, walking around, having those conversations, I think we're gonna have to quarantine almost nobody. Like the vast majority of students are not gonna fall within that three feet. Uh, I, I think it's gonna be a very rare occurrence where we quarantine students because we had a case if we are universally masked. You know, during high spread last year, and this is once again, when the hybrid system was going at the middle school and the high school, we saw somewhere between 12 and 20 cases in schools per week. So without universal masking in place during high spread, we're gonna anticipate that we're gonna quarantine 500 to 1,000 students a week with current student densities. Uh, that's not acceptable. I don't think quarantining 10% of our students a week is an acceptable thing to do. And, and we need to be in compliance with the quarantine mandates and the rules, but we also need to have a way that we can figure out that we're not sending that many kids home because nobody wants that. Just a little graphic for you, and this is unfortunately my graphic editing, so you can see it. But at three feet, I mean, this individual student, we're gonna say is probably close, but I'm not really that worried about it if we're universally masked. I think we probably have this individual student by themselves. We would notify this student and this student's parents and let them know that your child was right around three feet away from a student who was COVID positive and we would like you to evaluate and watch them, but we're not gonna quarantine that student. In this scenario, we're, this is where we're universally masked. This is the circle we have to use to try and determine quarantine. If we don't have universal masking, this is the circle. This is the six foot circle. And you can see now in this classroom, we are at one, two, three, four, you know, at least four, probably five students who we're gonna quarantine because this student is positive. 
you know, if you do that eight times a day, that's 40 kids with one case at the high school plus lunch. You know, remember, we did not serve lunch at the high school last year. Now, I know some of our students are vaccinated and that'll have an impact. But even if we're, if we're looking at 20 cases, you're looking at 1,000 kids, you know, that you're going to be moving to quarantine. That's not a reasonable expectation for our families. And so we, we do not believe that's a good scenario, especially with the amount of spread that's currently happening, which is why we're making this recommendation. So our matrix that we're going to be using is, you know, during high spread, we have universal masks required to greatly reduce quarantines of students. During substantial spread and moderate spread, masks will be optional after two weeks of downward trend from high spread. So as we see those cases coming down, we're gonna feel much more confident that the number of cases we're gonna see is gonna be much lower. The number of quarantine students we're gonna have is gonna be much lower. And, and it is reasonable for us to say, okay, we can, we can remove those masks. It's, it's a reasonable thing for students to make those decisions individually. During low spread, we're gonna say masks will be immediately optional. Now I have the, the asterisk there because Masking during transportation is currently governed by a federal order and it is not dependent on anything. Uh, the federal order is in place currently and, and we're required to follow it. And we have had legal um, you know, information provided to us from numerous sources that we believe we need to follow that. I think the other thing that parents need to understand is buildings where the masks are, I'm sorry, where vaccinations are not possible for students so our elementary schools primarily. If we have a couple cases in that elementary school, we may say we're gonna go to universal masks in that building. We're going to go to that for two weeks until we see cases come down. I think that's just a reasonable thing to do. Um, we know that it does have an impact and it will reduce the number of quarantines once again in those buildings and so that we have less kids who are out. We don't have great plans in place for students who are quarantined. Last year, we had lots of opportunity during the day because we had reduced school days, we had reduced student loads, all those things for our teachers to try and work remotely with kids to do all kinds of things. We're developing those plans, but it's not going to look like last year. If a student's quarantined, they're probably at home and they're probably trying to keep up with school. We are not a fan of having lots of quarantine students. We just do not think that is in their best interest. And so we are going to work to have policies in place so that quarantines are reduced and that students are in school. Once again, there's a living document. It can and will be updated as the need arises. Uh, the real mandate on us is related to quarantine. And you know, if you are vaccinated, if you have a child who's eligible and they are vaccinated, and they're exposed. Right now, the rule is that, you know, they need to wear a mask uh, for, and then do it when they come back to school, but they're not ever excluded. And within two to five days of being, of that exposure, they need to have a COVID test. And if it's negative, they can remove their mask or they can wear their mask for two weeks and they would never have to have a COVID test, but they're never excluded from school unless they're symptomatic. That's a big difference. And that's something I think that families really need to understand that that is the rule right now. Once again, our goal, we want to keep kids in school and safe and as fully normal an educational experience as we can. We know for some families that wearing a mask really is something that they're against and they do not want to feel that that is a normal educational experience for their, their children. We are trying to put plans in place so that the kids are in school and that we are only wearing masks when we, and requiring them when we feel it's necessary to keep our kids in school. Uh, I understand that that's not going to be positively accepted by lots of folks. Uh, but I think it's important for me to come out and explain to you why we're making those decisions, to be transparent about it, to explain why we think it's in our best interest, why we think it keeps our kids in buildings, and to move forward. I appreciate your continued support. It is a difficult time, obviously, uh, you know, to be running a school district. There are lots of opinions that are very strong about how we should be operating. All I can say to you is that we operated last year in a manner that I think was very good for the majority of our students. We provided them with an excellent education, very difficult time. We intend to do the same thing again this year. I appreciate your support, as I said, and thank you for your support of our schools. Take care. I'll see you in the air.